Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. I hope uh, everybody's enjoying their summer. Um, you know, there's lots of challenges, of course, this year, but, uh, you know, life goes on, at least uh, for the moment. So I'm going to continue my discussions on the global uh, carbon budget in specific, specifically um, on methane, the methane component of it. And at the end of last video, I showed this plot here. This is the total emissions of methane globally, okay, 596 teragrams. And this is the, um, the total sinks, 571. Okay, emissions are greater than sinks, so the methane is increasing. Um, it's got a growth rate of uh, you know, varies, you know, uncertainty 14 to 19.5 with a mean of 16.8. Okay, um, and you can see the components of the emissions from fossil fuel production and use, agriculture and waste, biomass and biofuel burning, um, and those are, these are the anthropogenic, um, anthropogenic fluxes and then the natural fluxes from wetlands and from inland waters, geological, so seeps from the earth, oceans, uh, termites, wild animals, permafrost, vegetation. Okay, so this component, so the danger is, is that as we warm the Arctic more and more, um, these natural emissions, specifically from permafrost and from the oceans in the Arctic, et cetera, uh, can eventually rise very rapidly and swamp all of the anthropogenic fluxes. These are the sinks from chemical reactions in the atmosphere of the methane, primarily with um, hydroxide, OH, but also with chlorine and ozone and singlet oxygen. And these are the sinks of the methane in the soils. Okay, um, this is showing the methane emissions for in teragrams of methane per year for 2017 by region, source category, and latitude. So the emissions are color-coded here, and those are in the background of the map. So you can see, uh, you know, very, very high emissions, for example, in this region, in these regions. Um, so the shading of the brown on the map shows you the emissions in the different regions. Um, so you, and this, these, this shows you the different latitudes so 60 degrees north to 90 degrees north in the high Arctic. It's only about 5% of the total emissions is from this region. And this is, you know, update is up to 2017. So the Arctic uh, methane bomb has not gone off yet, clearly, with this being 5% of the total emissions. This is in the mid latitudes in the northern hemisphere, 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north, where most of the global industry is. So the methane is 188 uh, teragrams. This is about a third of the total. And about two thirds of the total is, in, is from 90 south to 30 north. So most of this is from the, the tropics. Now in terms of the uh, source component, for example, the wetlands is the biggest chunk here. Agriculture and waste is pretty big. This is fossil fuel emissions. This is other natural emissions, and this is the biomass and biofuel burning. Um, so you can see, you know, in the Arctic, it's mostly in the, in the wetlands. And you can see in the different continents, uh, the US only, North America, South America, you can see the different components. Um, of, so wetlands are the green, and then fossil fuels are the brown agriculture and waste is, is the blue chunks and then biomass a small sliver and biofuel burning and other natural emissions so you can see sort of the latitudinal breakdown and clearly the arctic methane bomb has not um, been detonated yet but as we continue to lose arctic sea ice and warm the arctic at ever increasing rates uh, we're essentially playing with fire the increases the, the increased risk of triggering uh, huge methane emissions in the Arctic is becoming ever greater. But as of, uh, you know, as of 
now, well, up to 2017, it has not been triggered, and it doesn't look like it's been tri triggered since, uh, but this study only shows up to 2017. This is showing the change in total methane emissions in 2017 compared with mean values for 2000 to 2006 by region. Okay, so this is the top down, is the darker shaded, and bottom up is the lighter shade, shade, shaded. This is emission changes in teragrams of methane between, so from 2017 compared to 2000 to 2006. And you can see, uh, you know, the mo so this is a geographical breakdown. So big, large, large increase in China, in Africa and the Middle East, and in the rest in, in Asia and Oceania. And, uh, you know, not so big emissions in North America, South America, least, and Europe's actually dropping a bit, Russia and Central Asia here. And then if you take the, the latitudinal dependence, this is the total world, the sum of all the uh, different countries. Um, and this is, in the, this is in the 90 degree south to 30 degree north region. So this encompasses the equator large methane emissions, uh, less so uh, from, so this is about two thirds of the global total, but one third of the global total is in the 30 degree north to 60 degree north region, where most of the industry in the world is located. And in the Arctic, you know, 60 degree north to 90 degree north, uh, so far uh, relatively small emissions compared to the, the, um, the rest of the globe. Okay, about 5% or so. And this shows also, this is another breakdown showing, okay, so we've got the data is the top down and the bottom up for wetlands in the various regions. So light green, dark green. You can see the component here in the different regions. Then we've got the top down and the bottom up. Um, for fossil fuels is the browns. This is the world. Okay, so China's uh, large here, um, Africa's fairly large, rest of Asia and Oceania large. This is the agricultural, is the blue, top down and bottom up in agriculture. So these are the largest components of the methane. And then biomass burning, um, and then other, uh, okay, other, other natural emissions. Okay, so you can see the different, um, regions. Uh, let's go down to the, and th those are the key factors in this paper. And now this is the key paper. This is, uh, so I'm going to talk about this in some of the details of this. First of all, uh, this is the second version of a review paper on the global methane budget. The first one was published in 2016. Huge author list, multidisciplinary people from all over the world. Okay. Uh, you know, enormous author list, okay? Goes on and on and on. It's like one of those particle physics papers where you have like a hundred different authors, okay? 72 different uh, authors here. So their goal was is to understand and quantify the global methane budget to assess pathways to mitigate climate change. Atmospheric emissions and concentrations of methane continue to increase making methane the second most important human influence greenhouse gas in terms of climate forcing after carbon dioxide. The relative importance of methane to CO2 depends on the shorter atmospheric lifetime, stronger warming potential, right? The large global warming potential and variations in atmospheric growth rate um, over the past decade, the causes of which are still debated. Okay, uh, there's a lot of uncertainties. The atmospheric growth rate arises from a variety of geographically overlapping methane sources and from the destruction of methane by short-lived hydroxyl radicals. Okay, so there's a consortium of multidisciplinary scientists under the umbrella of the Global Carbon Project to look at, you know, to synthesize, put together all of the research that exists, stimulate new research, to improve and update the global methane budget. Okay, so this is a living, if you like, living review paper, continuously modified, and then when there's enough changes, it's published, second version. 
um, and it looks at top-down studies. So we have atmospheric observations from satellites, etc., with an inverse modeling framework, and then bottom-up estimates. So it looks at process-based models. It estimates all the sources of emissions from the land and oceans, and uh, those two numbers are compared. Okay, so the total emissions for the 2008 to 27 decade uh, from the from the top down approach is 576 teragrams of methane per year, um, and um, 359 of that or 60 percent is due to anthropogenic sources, which are basically emissions caused by direct human activity. Okay, and um, then the uh, the rest is the natural emissions. And then the bottom up, there's bottom up methods suggest almost 30% larger global emissions than top down inversion methods. So the idea is to try to get better and better science to, to narrow the gap between these two things. And the bottom up method looks at like individual sources like natural wetlands, wind, inland water systems, geological sources, etc. Okay. Um, so, but, both, but basically the gist of this is that about two-thirds of the global budget is in the southern hemisphere to 30 degrees north, so most of that is in the tropics, and about one-third is in the mid-latitudes, 30% of the emissions in the 30 to 60 degree north latitude zone. High northern latitudes is only about four or five percent, that's 60 to 90 degree north. Okay, and uh, basically, okay, so there's all kinds of data here, um, and I'm going to talk about some of these uh, details here, but um, I highly recommend you read this paper. Okay, this is the best paper that I've actually seen on methane. It's very, very comprehensive. It talks about this, all of the sources. It talks about the sinks, it talks about the OH, uh, chlorine, sinks. This, for example, is the, the um, methane concentration in the atmosphere globally um, in parts per billion from four different data sets. And if you take the derivative or the slope of this, it shows you the slope. So emissions were high in the 80s and then they dropped. The emissions were close to zero. The slope was close to flat here from 1999 to 2006, and then it started to increase after 2007. Okay, um, the different, uh, it talks about point sources, it talks about, uh, you know, wide uh, area sources. Um, one teragram is 10 to the 12th grams of methane per year, and, and to put, if we were to put that into gigatons, a thousand grams per kilogram, that's 10 of the cubed, and a thousand kilograms per ton, that's 10 of the cubed. So this would be a million gigatons of methane per year to put it into some units that might be more familiar. So it looks at all of the different aspects, um, different source categories, anthropogenic, natural. Uh, it looks at the sources, at, it looks at the sinks from the OH, it tries to look at the uh, hydroxide um, geographical distribution, so latitudinal distribution. This is uh, the different emission scenarios where the SSP is the shared socioeconomic pathways. That's the different scenarios uh, that replaces RCP in the last IPCC report, and they're calling it SSP now. But it has all of the different scenarios. Here we are now with the methane parts per billion and the different scenarios as to where we're, where we're heading. Um, okay, and it talks, it breaks it down into like methane from coal mining, methane from oil and natural gas systems. This is showing the wetland distribution, uh, the different methane levels emitted to so milligrams of methane per square meter per day emissions, so em high emissions here in the rainforest, okay, wetland emissions, fossil fuel emissions, mostly in the northern hemisphere industry, agriculture and waste, biomass and biofuel, and uh, there's uh, other, all kinds of, of data here, 
Um, you know, it's a very detailed paper. 